audience and uh, I think I need to hold this. Um, I was It's a wood. Okay. <laughs> no, it works. <laughs> it works, right. It works okay, thank you. Uh, I started like 28 years ago as a basic researcher. Now I, a few years later, I changed to, to my focus to more clinical researcher. And since I have that foundation, I think I, I was able to, to develop uh, several things that I think uh, the, the final uh, goal is to reach patients and to improve quality of life of the people that we are, you know, all, we, all of us are working to improve quality of life of people. Uh, so, but I was trying to find something that would, could be used uh, now uh, or years ago and in the clinical field. And uh, I'm gonna try to make a mix during my presentation. Uh, it will be basic and also clinical. And I apologize for some of the pictures that will be a little bit crude, but that's the reality where I work. So uh, I believe in nature. My, one of my patients are horses. And um, that's from when I learned most of uh, what I know about uh, chronic ulcers. And that's how I was able to, to reach uh, some of my patients. So this has been my life uh, between horses and ulcers, the life of a passionate horse, uh, doctor. Uh, this is my group at the University of Los Andes, small group, uh, but I always thank them for their uh, support. Uh, I don't know why I got a, a very obsessive and I got in love with these uh, blood cells, platelets. Uh, I don't know why. But uh, I've been doing this for more than 15 years now, and I developed this concept of natural guided regeneration. What is this? It's just using what we, everybody, ha everybody has. I mean, our own potential to regenerate our own tissues. So it's just very simple. Uh, you obtain uh, what we call, and this has been my experience in the last 15 years, uh, just a fibrin cloth. Uh, from uh, his autology from the same patients. And we have been using this in all this area, maxillofacial surgery, neurosurgery, otolaryngology, implant dentistry, soft and hard tissue regeneration, burns, diabetic food, any, anything that you, where there's an uh, injury, you can use this. And this is uh, very simple. You get this five link cloth, you get an exudate from that, you can use it as a gel. You can make a membrane that also is a tissue graft. It becomes a tissue graft even if it comes just fibrin. Uh, you can get from uh, every 10 ml uh, this membrane. is 3 centimeters by 1.5 centimeters. And the good thing is very cheap. It only costs like 25 cents each. So, uh, and it's the, the thickness is about 0.3 to 1 millimeter. And it's very elastic very resistance. You can see here, uh, you can punch. It's like a latex. So it's very strong. It can be sutured. It can be made in different shapes, depending where you want to apply it. And uh, sometimes it get confused with the area of PRPs. This is, and PRFs. So uh, this is because we are, until now, we are not in a consensus about uh, wow, how to call and how to classify this. And many of the studies, you know, they have the lack of proper terminology and uh, there are many confusion in this area. We have trying to classify this. We have proposed some classification, very easy ones, and just to divide the PRP families and the PRF families. So that will give you four different architectures. And this is just based because each product has his, his own identity, what we call uh, a biological signature. So this is what it makes everything different. It cannot be compared between each other. Uh, in this case, we have studied the release of the growth factors of the membranes, and more from than 
between seven and 21 days in vitro, and in, in vivo, uh, more than 14 days. And we have the same growth factor that we have been hearing on the whole day. But uh, just to show you that yeah, when you change something, when you change the protocol, how do you obtain this, uh, it makes completely different the way that the, the membrane behaves or the product behaves, or the way that you know, the growth factors release of the cell content or the fibrin architecture. And that is completely different between each product. And we just recently uh, studied the BMP2 release from the LPRF because uh, we found out that it's mainly released by monocytes. So uh, it's also, this is very important for the bone tissue regeneration. And it, you can see here there's completely different between two different products. The other thing is how to get, you know, the, uh, the cells uh, viability has to be preserved. If not, if you, don't, if you kill the cells, I mean, there's nothing you can do. So it has to be done in a very specific way. And also the fibrin, the structure of the fibrin has to be very specific. It's completely different between PRP or PRF or the different protocols. Uh, this is what, what we proposed in uh, 2005 about, you know, how even if it looks like the same macro, and microscopically it's completely different. And uh, why to use LPRF? Because it's very simple. It doesn't have any chemicals, uh, and it's very easy to do it, 100% autologous, and a very uh, simplest and economical way. What are the benefits? Well, there are many benefits because you got most of the growth factor that you need and most of the cell that you need, and also the stem cell that you need to regenerate the tissue. Uh, we have studied the effect of this, uh, the LPRF on different uh, human cells, human fibroblast, human keratinocyte, human osteoblast, uh, human osteoblast differentiation. And uh, why it's important to include leukocytes and not to exclude the leukocytes. And why this is dose dependent, the effect is dose dependent in different uh, human cells. And we have done a lot of studies on uh, mesenchymal stem cells. And you can see also here in the membrane, uh, this is, you can use it this as a very nice scaffold to see uh, stem cells or to you know, uh, transport uh, stem cells. Also, these are, these are the stem cells that are included. These are, you know, circulating stem cells that are trapped in this fibrin mesh. Also, the antimicrobial activity is very strong against most of the most uh, important uh, bacteria. So that's, that's why we have been able to treat uh, cases like this. This is a beta hemolytic streptococcus infection after 24 hours. Uh, this is after 48 hours complete destruction of the eyelids, the nose, and the uh, mouth, the lips. And we can use this LPRF membrane as a tissue graph to regenerate the lips, the nose, and the eyelids. And this is, instead of using a skin graph that would not support uh, the, you know, this type of uh, lesion, uh, we can use LPRF membranes. Also, in you know, stimulitis or uh, different problem with, when sometimes you have an, um, surgical plates or infections, chronic stimulated, you can use it to regenerate bone. Uh, this is a chronic stimulated after 30 years of non-healing evolution, and we just do the same thing all the time. And you can see here, this has been here for 30 years, and usually you regenerate bone in three months. And this is after three months using the LPRF treatment. This is a, a problem sometimes when you have a rotate flap. The problem is on the donor side. This is three months non-healing in the donor side. So if you use LPRF or the natural guided regeneration, you just cover it with the membrane. And this is after six days. And after 18 days, you can see how well vascularized this is. And this will become a new tissue 
a new skin in just five weeks. And at eight weeks, you can see that also is hair growing up. And it can be used at any age. This is an 88, 89 years old man with a pleomorphic sarcoma. So you can use it in the surgical side. Instead of using a skin graft, uh, just using IV sedation, you can put all this pavement here, and this is after nine days, after one month, two months, 10 weeks. And he celebrated, he's 90 years old also. And now you, go, you went from here to this, and um, just using this membrane. You can use it in burns, and you can get a very nice results regenerating skin. We use it now at uh, the CF leaks to treat it when you, especially in trauma or sometimes when we use uh, a technique uh, endo the, through the nose to get the uh, tumors at the base of the skull. Just to seal, so this could be in contact with the brain, so it's very safe. And then we went to more worse cases, like this one, chronic wounds. 22 years non-healing, 23, 16 years. So there's no way to treat this. There's no answer from medicine to treat this. So just using the LPRF, uh, you can get these results in five weeks, 12 weeks, or 10 weeks. And this is another big thing, diabetic food. So this is the same thing. The only solution for this is amputation. If you use uh, LPRF in most of the cases, you get these results. So in this case, 10 weeks, 16 weeks, or 24 weeks. So it ask, it, the results are very fast. You can see it in a week. So this is day one. This is the first day, for example. 48 hours, two days, five days, seven, 10. So this is a uh, diabetic food. Average time to uh, close this ulcer would be 30 to 90 days. It's completely healed in 10 days. With really new skin. Like this, after 22 years of non-healing, you just cover everything with the membranes. And this is only after two weeks. And this is eight weeks. We went from here to here in two months, after 23 years of non-healing. Uh, this is a man that refused the amputation after you know he was 78 years old. So, um, this is deletion. We just covered everything with LPRF membranes. And this is one month, two months, three months, four, five, six. Now he was in a wheelchair. Now he returned to walk. So seven, eight, nine months. So you can see at, the, at times go, usually these lesions will recur. Uh, will, uh, you know, th that's the main problem. So we will follow th this. And so this is after 14 months, 18 months, 24, 36, 42, uh, five years. So this is the histology of the lesion. I don't want to go into detail, just to want to show you everything. But um, the good thing is sometimes this is at the membrane that becoming connected tissue. But we, sometimes we have this type of cells here. These are epithelial cells that were not supposed to be there. So we assume that the, they will come, where did they come from? Probably from the stem cells that are you know, included in the uh, membrane. And you know, we have isolated them, so we know that they are stem cells. We have induced to different lineage, so they are stem cells. And the other nice thing is, this is the membrane that now become connective tissue. This is the new membrane that is becoming the new connective tissue. And this is the new epithelium that is growing on top of that. So uh, five years later, this is the man. He's supposed, the nest supposed to have this leg here. So he's walking, you can see it. After uh, five years at that moment, seven years now. So still, you know, using his two legs. And walking very well. So it was no solution for him, but this gave you another option. Uh, sometimes you get to this. 
So th there is no way to treat this. No way. You have the whole muscle, you have all the fascia out of the leg, and you're just using the membranes. In five months, you get that result. So if you sometimes you have this lesion in the mouth that will give you a huge defect. You can see here there is no bone. This is no bone. There is no way to treat this without some type of scaffold or any type of a bone substitute or maybe a bone plaque from some uh, donor site. So that's the lesion that you're going to have and after three months, just filling everything with the LPRF, you get that result. And underneath of that, of that you know, you have regenerated the bone. Even you, the most difficult thing is to regener regenerate cortical bone. So uh, that's the core sample that we took from that case. This is just normal bone, uh, completely normal bone, trabecular uh, normal bone. We are running now a study here in, in Levin, uh, the University uh, of Levin, trying to you know, uh, measure how much volume that you can you regenerate with the LPRF. So this is a very nice result. We are doing a micro CT study. And what we have found is that the, the bone mineral density is higher when you use LPRF in most of the cases. Also, the another good thing is uh, the bone volume is higher, the trabecular thickness is higher, and the trabecular space is less. That means you have a strong bone, new, a more strong bone. You can place an implant there, and you can see that this is, there is no difference between the new bone and the remaining bone. Uh, sometimes you have cases really bad like this. This is a very old man. So sorry for the pictures, but maybe you don't like it, but how do you, do you treat this case that is nothing there? I mean, there is no bone, there is no, the, the sinus is gone, even the, the nose cavity is gone. So uh, at this age of uh, 85 years old. So you, you just fill everything with the LPRF, and this is after three weeks. And after three months, Everything is being uh, recontracted, and you know you have you know you have after three months you have bone. So we went. This is the new combing CT. This was the before. This is three months later. Just not doing anything. So just another study on the implant surfaces. You mentioned something uh, now. It's very important. The implant surfaces, how how uh, they are treated, how do you make Mainly, most of they are hydrophobic. Uh, I think it should be hydrophilic. It should be biomimetic. It should be a fractal design in a nanotexture. So that, if you see the reaction of the fibrin or the LPRF with the regular surfaces, it's completely different when you see it with the new surfaces. The gene expression of the new surfaces also, compared to the acid edge, is completely different. So you can see when it's hydrophobic, even this is the LPRF in the liquid stage before it coagulates. And uh, we did this study in dogs just to show you that when you use you know, the regular implant, double acid edge surface uh, as a control, uh, what we call the floating implant because it's a big cavity, there's no bone contact, no bone stability. And when you use the ocean surface, for example, a biometric surface, plus the LPRF, you get a completely different result. In this case, this is what we should be expected, fibrous tissue. In this case, you have a, a new regenerated bone. So the advantage of this is 100% autologous. It has a very strong uh, analgesic effect, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. It has more regeneration effect on any type of wound, any type. It has a lot of growth factors, has a lot of cells, stem cells. Always is an ambulatory treatment, very easy, very low cost. Disadvantage, of course, we need more large studies, requires specific training, requires to improve and modify the wound management, depends on the patient's blood supply, of course, 
And the main problem is it does not have any commercial value. That's the main problem. So the conclusion, this is not a classical uh, biomaterial. It might be understood and manipulated as an autology or tissue graph. The matrix and cells might be respected during the use in order to get the best regeneration uh, tissue uh, engineering results. The applications are endless and need to be validated carefully in all the configuration. It significantly changed the approach of complex surgery, but it required to know the strength and limit it, and how to associate it with optimized implant and bone biomaterials membrane. Uh, just to finish and say thank you to all of you, just a gift from a, a Chilean a guitar player. What I have learned all these years is when you heal a patient wound, doesn't change anything in this world, but you can change the whole world of that patient. And this is Andres Godoy, a Chilean musician that is a professional guitar player that lives in Germany. And uh, I would like you to hear it. Because uh, it doesn't mean anything, maybe, if you see that. This is an acoustic guitar, not digital guitar. But when you see that, that changed completely the scenario. He developed a technique to play a gui an acoustic guitar with one ar an arm, not with one hand. So I really thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation and for the wonderful uh, data you show us. And um, of course, uh, if there is any question from the audience, uh, please. <coughs> Are you not familiar with, I mean, you haven't talked anything about the process you actually manufactured. Right? Of course. That's probably confidential. Or no, 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 no. It's an, o it's an, op it's an open access technique. It's available for everyone. I was sure that nothing of this will be patented, so it's uh, open, it's free for everyone. Uh, my question is, are you using strong ink to accelerate? No, I, as I said, you c don't use any chemical. This is, the coagulation is natural, you don't use anything, you don't use anticoagulant, you don't use calcium chloride or uh, thrombine, anything chemical. So this is so completely pure blood. Excuse me? So you wait impatiently after you bleed the patient? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it takes about 10 minutes, no more than that. It's not, it's not a fast rate or quick rate bleeding or something? No, 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 no. It's, it's uh, you, of course, the technique, is very, uh, the technique is very simple. It takes 15 minutes exactly to get the membrane. It can be done by anyone, a doctor, a dentist, a nurse, a technician, anyone can do it. And also, it's, it's an excellent scaffold to, 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 uh, to seed, uh, for example, stem cells. We also are uh, doing that. But the question is how you take the water out of it. I mean, you have to take a lot of water out, right? Yeah. A lot of fluid out. Right. That's what, that's what you get from 10 uh, ml. Uh, that membrane is 3 by 1.5. If not, if you will use the, the, the whole amount of you usually will get a 10 uh, centimeter, so only, you only get four. It will reduce about to 40% of the total volume. Yeah, yeah, you get 40%. You base the cell on the, on the contraction, of the natural contraction of the blood. Yeah, you avoid the contraction because the technique, is, because it's fast, you avoid the contraction, and when you make the membrane, the membrane will stay stable for hours or days. So you avoid the contraction. Also, the membrane avoid the contraction of the bio myofibroblast. That's why do you, you do usually don't get a scar because there is no contraction of the myofibroblast. There's a lot of things in here, so I didn't have the time to explain everything. Yeah, yeah, we have kept it up uh, for a year now. Oh. So, but it has to be in, in using clinically, it has to be used uh, uh, as autologous okay. for the same patient. But for experimental things, yeah, it can be used for days, years, I, I don't know. Yeah. What about allogeneic uh, use, you tried that? Yeah. 
uh, only with uh, a small burns on a uh, small child, trying to get the most uh, from the parents because. Uh, we're still working on that. We are, we are starting to get the, the, the one of the parents the more genetic, you know, uh, close to the, the to the child. But it's it's something that's really new. We are we're just exploring that. But it could be done. But uh, it's not my field at this moment. It's completely different because it's the same as I said. It's completely different. I show you some some different within APRF because uh, the process how to obtain it is is different. That means that you get a different product that has a different uh, let's say fingerprints. Yeah, it will act. It, it, you may be, get the same thing, same result, but uh, it will not have the same. Uh, it cannot be compared between each other. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And the results are better? Uh, I would not say that they are better because you have seen that these are great results, but maybe in bone cases because when you don't have, when you have to keep the space when you have to regenerate bone, if you cannot keep the space very well as with a mechanical, let's say, support, in that case, I think that will be something that could be useful. Also, using a scaffold, I mean, like the one that we have seen it during these days, uh, it will be great in that some cases because this will contract after a few days and you need at least three weeks to maintain the space to regenerate the, the whole bone. Yes. Thank you very much. Over 99 percent, probably. Wow. Yeah, we have we we have a large data. We are we are trying to reach 1,000 patients now. We are running a uh, multi-center study in four countries, and uh, the recurrence is it will be, uh, in my expectation, less than 10 percent, and that is really high. Okay. Yeah, because the quality of the tissue that that you get. It's completely different from the quality that you when you do get when you have that regular treatment. Right. Yeah, you improve the quality of the local tissue and the surrounded area also. Thank you for your amazing funding. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, we we have used it. Uh, in what case, for example? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for for wrinkles, for wrinkles. Yeah, for wrinkles. Yes, that's another that's another area that we are exploring, and uh, we have now only a year and a half. So uh, also for hair growth, also you can use it. But it's something that it's for the future. Not that we don't have the enough data. Uh, uh, I, I need to, to work at least five years to, to present this uh, as uh, something that can be useful, I think. Uh, but for now, also the, the joint injections are very promising, but it's only, we only have two years now. So we need to wait another three at least. Oh, okay, okay, that would be great. That's my goal. I, I, I th we, we use it now in 100% of any type of surgery at, at my university as a gold standard for any type of surgery because any, a surgery, you make a wound. And this, is, this will improve the, any type of wound. And imagine what it, what it does with, we know with the tissues that are very damaged and they are not capable to regenerate by itself. So when, when you ha are healthy, the result are much better. Or maybe 
you don't need that much things and you know your body will know what you need and it will take it whatever is needed. So that's what I, I call it natural draination. We don't do anything. We just put the thing there and let it work. Yeah, that, that's what I said. This, this will avoid may, sometimes many of the problems that we have after surgeries, especially when tissue get exposed or the suture, you know, uh, get, you lose the suture, for example. If this is underneath of the, the, um, underneath of the, the surgical wound, uh, it wouldn't be any problem because it will seal everything and, it, and it's not colonized by any bacteria. That's another good thing. It cannot be colonized by any bacteria. That's an amazing thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You.